Hello everybody, welcome back to Let's Play Ace Attorney Investigations, Miles Edgeworth. Last time we did some uh, questioning and, um, yeah, um, what's his name? Gumshoe is implicated in the murder of the two peeps, so, um, I'm a look, I, I just, I, I still fail to see, like, a, why they all jump to that, like, reasoning. And B, because it's very obvious that, like, there's someone else with a motive. But, what, what, whatever, let's just go on. Sir, what is to become of the trial to the Codopian Embassy staff member's murder? Indeed, since both the suspect and the prosecutor are now dead. The case will be dismissed. In other words, the trial ends here prematurely. Ha! Huh. Looks like you'll have to wait just a bit longer for your big debut. I suppose it can't be helped. The evidence for this trial will be transferred to you in a little while. Sir, what do you think about the murder of the Kodopian Embassy staff member? and the murders of Mr. Faraday and Mr. Rell. What an outrageous circus it has all become. That Faraday brought it all upon himself with his naivete. An outrageous circus. Right, sir. I grow weary of this topic, Edgeworth. I will have you assigned to a different case. Papa, you'll come and watch my courtroom debut next, won't you? Hmm, I'll consider it. Sir, if I may, please, allow me to continue with my investigation. Whatever for. I know that there is already a suspect in the murder of Mr. Faraday and Mr. Rell. However, there is not enough evidence to prove that it was he who committed the crime. I'd like to continue investigating in order to find the perfect proof of his guilt. The perfect proof. Don't make me laugh. A worthless person like you has no right to claim such a thing as perfection. Um, Papa? Who do you think is the real culprit behind these murders? Miles and I, we're competing to see who can find the real killer first. Plus, being able to investigate a real crime scene is a really rare opportunity. It would give us some real life experience, wouldn't you agree? Hmph. <laughs> if you want to investigate the case, or this case that much, then do as you wish. Then, you're allowing us to continue. In court, your top priority is to win. A solid investigation is one of the keys to winning. We have to make sure you become recognized as a first-rate prosecutor, don't we? It wouldn't be very interesting otherwise. I'm returning home now. Edgeworth, Franziska, see to it I'm not disturbed, save for the results of your competition. Yes, sir. Of course, Papa. Francisca, thank you. What are you thanking me for? Your logic earlier was filled on that scruffy detective's lie. That means that the competition is still on. Yes, just as you wished. <laughs> I couldn't let you get off so easily. Now then, let's see how well you fare on the investigation from here, Miles Edgeworth. I know I don't have enough information yet, so my first order of business will be to question anyone involved with this case. Well, he's right there. It wasn't me, I tell ya. I didn't do anything wrong. Yes, I understand, so let's just calm down, okay, buddy? I doubt I'll get anything useful from the detective while he is this agitated. Oh, you. Pun not intended. <laughs> Miss you. Oh, it's you, Edgeworth. And who are you? Wait, you were at the crime scene just now, weren't you? You should be disbarred for not knowing who I am. I am Francisca Von Karma, and I am about to become the successor to the family name. About to? Yes, it means that for now you're still just another kid. In which case, it's only natural that I didn't know who you are. What? Why are you whipping me? <laughs> anyway, it looks like they are planning to hold the evidence a bit longer. If there is one thing I can't stand, it's waiting. 
I'm terribly sorry, but I have but a few more questions to ask of you. <laughs> Look at you, eyebrows scratch with lines on your forehead. And that to ask of you <laughs> What exactly is so funny? Sorry, I'm just bad at dealing with a super serious atmosphere. Apparently they failed to teach her proper behavior at a crime scene in law school. Uh, ooh, I feel much better now. Uh, so what does he want to talk about? I'd like to inquire as to where you were at the time of the murder. We were in defendant lobby number one the whole time up until we heard the gunshot. And by we, I mean Mr. Bad. If you don't believe me, feel free to ask him yourself. You were with Detective Bad. Why? We had a little something to discuss, that's all. So I take it that you are acquaintances with Detective Bad. Yeah, he was the detective in charge of the KG-8 incident. Detective Bad is also related to that incident. That's right, he was the one who was supposed to protect my sister, Cece. Ooh. But you know how that turned out, don't you, Edgeworth? Miles Edgeworth, I have no idea what you two are talking about. I've heard of the KG-8 incident from my papa, but how does that case relate to you, Miss You? The victim of that case, CCU, is my little sister. <laughs> You're making that super serious face again. I'm fine, really. I just make it a point to rub some more salt in his wounded pride every time I see him. But she talks about doing that as she laughs away is kind of creepy. Oh, speaking of Mr. Bad, he and Mr. Faraday. I'd say they met up just about every single time the Yadakarasu made a move. It's pr yeah, practically a given that the two would meet up at every one of the crime scenes. I see. He did mention that he is in charge of the Yadakarasu investigation earlier. Maybe I should ask her what she knows about the Yadakarasu in more detail. First, the time of the murder. You claim that at the time of the murder you were with Detective Bad. But don't you lawyers usually discuss the trial with your clients during a recess? We do, and that's why I, uh, what I was planning to do. But Mr. Faraday was being rather threatening, and he dragged Mr. Rell away. After that, Mr. Bad came into lobby number one, so we just stayed there and talked. And what did you talk with Detective Bad about? <laughs> Nothing interesting. I just insulted him some. Talked about how the trial was going, and then I insulted him some more. Bloody. When she's not laughing, her mouth seemingly spews nothing but insults. Anyway, Mr. Bad and I were in defendant lobby number one when the murders occurred. So I really can't tell you anything about the hallway of lobby number or the uh, or lobby number two. I see. <coughs> Macrell. I'd like to ask you a few questions about your client, Mr. Macrell. Now, your client first claimed to be the Yadagrasu. Is that correct? Yeah. Once I heard that it was the Yadagrasu that had made off of the evidence from KG8. I began to ask Mr. Rell all sorts of questions, but to no avail. Turns out Mr. Rell was not the Yadagarasu. He had just made that up. He made it up. Mr. Rell's crime was caught on tape by security cameras, but there is no footage of him sneaking into the Kodopian Embassy itself. Hold on for just one second. Then you mean to say that you knew that he is not the real Yadagarasu? Wow. You knew that he was not the real Yadagarasu? And that he was just another cold-blooded killer, and you were ready to defend him? Yes, that's right. I see. So the defense lawyer is actually just someone whose job is to cover for criminals. No? Have you learned- oh wait, no, this was before the Phoenix Wright games proper, fair enough. That's why defense lawyers are so detestable, but they are no match for us von karmas. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe it, you're serious! Well, why don't you say that face for something really worth being serious about? And Edgeworth, do you remember what I said earlier? I <laughs> have my own agenda. <laughs> I'm still on the hunt for leads regarding the KG-8 incident, alright? And for that, you have not a single qualm about defending a known killer. Don't put words in my mouth, I said no such thing. The only way I had to get close to Mr. Rell was to be his lawyer. I had no intention of covering for him. Ever. So don't you dare suggest I was going to. I'm sorry. Forgive my rashness. 
I mean, that's just something that comes with the territory. Sometimes the person you're defending actually did do the crime, but you still got to defend them. And other times they didn't, and they're being falsely accused. That's justice for you. You know, you got to just deal with it and do your best to plead your case. That's all. Like, I even remember, like, reading Johnny Cochran's book. Like, yeah, he defended a lot of people that were, like, framed or that were being unjustly targeted by the uh, system. But he also mentioned in his book that, like, um, one time a suspect he was defending was, like, during, like, in the middle of the trial, during the recess, was like, uh, like, sir, I, I gotta tell you something. And it was like, he admitted to, like, doing the crime like I think it was like robbery or something and Johnny was pissed because it's like you're supposed to disclose everything to me prior to the case but it's like at that point you can't really like throw the case or just you know ask to be taken off I mean Maybe? Well, I don't know, because it was, like, right before the closing statements. So, yeah, at that point, it really is too late. But, like, prior, you... Like, not... I don't, I don't know if, Actually... Can you be taken off a case in... Or a trial? Oh, yeah, a case. That's the proper term. In the middle of a trial. Without it being thrown out. We have to look that one up. That's... Because, yeah, in Johnny's case, that happened, like, right before the closing statements. But, yeah, and then, like, he did try to... Like, he didn't try to throw the case, but he did admit that he was like, Jury, it's up to you to decide if this man is guilty or innocent. It's up to you. And, yeah, the um, jury found him innocent. But... Like, Johnny did confide in him. It was like, if you ever need a lawyer again, do not come to me. Like, on good, like, consciousness, I can't, like, defend you. Especially if you're not going to be, like, truthful. I can't remember if he said, like, he did, like, look out to see what became of the guy. And I think he said he did stay out of trouble from then on. Could be wrong, though. I, I have to reread, like, that autobiography. It was a good read, but yeah, sometimes that shit just happens. Anyway, sorry for that long diversion. Yatagarasu. Miss you. I was wondering if you could tell me about the Yatagarasu. Yatagarasu, huh? I don't really know much about that character myself. I do get a lot of consultation requests from companies to defend them. Requests from companies? Yatagarasu isn't some petty thief out for money, you know. Hmm. All right, then. Perhaps Yadagarasu is in the business of stealing people's lives. You're not very funny or witty, are you, little Miss Von Karma? Eh? Francisca, be careful about who you whip. Choose carefully or we may be sued by... No. There. I chose carefully. Just like you wanted. <laughs> <laughs> that, just now, was hilarious, little Missy. Hmm, of course it was. What is wrong with these two women? Why does my pain give them delight? And, so in the end, what is the Yatagarasu? I have to say, I had never even heard of this thief when I was in Germany. Yatagarasu deals in information. Mainly in digging out dirt about backroom dealings and the like of companies. Yadagarasu is a vigilante who steals such info and then makes it public for all to see. Hm. <laughs> vigilante or not, this person sounds like just another criminal to me. I suppose you could put it that way, too. But either way, I get a lot of more clients now, thanks to that thief. Sounds like Miss Yu is profiting nicely. Hmm. Suppose I've gotten all I can out of Miss Yu. I should move on and speak with Detective Gumshoe now. Is he calmed down? Alright. Detective Gumshoe. Hey, it's you, pal. You're here. Yeah, ouch. As am I. 
don't think you needed to whip him to let him know that. I didn't do it, pal. I swear on my honor as a detective. I really didn't. Your words are useless. I place my trust only in the evidence, detective. Once the investigation is fully over, and should we find out that you are the killer, there will be no mercy to be had for you. Have a heart, pal. <laughs> but you're not worried, right? After all, you have nothing to worry about, if you really are innocent, that is. That's right. Hey, pal, I want to do your perfect investigation to get the real killer for me, will ya? Hmm. I would have done so even had you not requested me to, detective. So you, Mr. Faraday, had a small meeting last week, did you? What exactly did you do to make him so angry? I just asked Detective Matt the same thing myself, pal. Turns out he was mad at me because of my very first day as a detective. I reported it in my usual post ahead of the criminal affairs department. By the time I got down to criminal affairs, I was really, really late. That's when he uh, gave me that huge speech. I remember doing the same exact thing in elementary school. On the first day of school every year, I'd always wind up going to my old classroom. How pathetic for the detective to be compared to a mere school child. I mean, that shit happens. You claim to be standing guard in front of the door to lobby number two during the recess. However, when did you receive the order to do so and from whom? Um, order around 3.20 and from Detective Bad Pal. Today's trial took a really crazy turn. So I was told to make sure nothing happened to Mr. Faraday. And yet something did happen to him, correct? Looks like it was a total waste of manpower to assign you to guard duty. Ow. Worse. Sting worse than that, uh, th th than your whip pal. So it's Detective Bad who ordered him to stand guard, huh? Hmm. Now then, Detective Gumshoe, is there anything else you'd like to tell me? Nope, not a thing, pal. In that case, allow us to take a look at what you're carrying on your personage. Ah! Wait, you can't do that. There's nothing of any particular value here. Well, my handcuffs and badge were confiscated by Detective Bad, so, you know. What is that open envelope I see sticking out of your coat pocket? Ah, hands off, pal. Just show it to us already. Yow. Annual bonus check within, five dollars total. Except there is no check inside. Bad your look, now give it back, pal. My first bonus is a brand new detective. Just got and cashed it today. Had literally no cash on me up until I did, you know? The envelope is really special to me. Now give it back. You don't need rubbish like this. Don't worry, we'll throw it away for you later. How could you? What? A bonus check for five dollars? What the fuck? I'm sorry, we need to take him in for questioning now. Also, why is it evidence? I think I've asked him just about everything I needed to. No, wait. Since he became a suspect, there is one piece of evidence I should reconfirm. Officer, I ask that you wait a second. I still have one thing I'd like to reconfirm with Detective Gumshoe. Understood, but please make it brief, sir. I want to hear it from the horse's mouth. Let's confirm whether or not his testimony about when the crime occurred is the truth. You told me earlier that you heard no sound other than the gunshot out in the hallway. Is that correct? No mistake about it, pal. Hmm. You are also claiming that no one passed through the hallway, either. Is that also correct? Yup. Not even a single ant passed through that hallway while I was on duty. Hmm. Hmm. You do realize that the lie you're telling is only making life more difficult for yourself. Huh. Oh. But it's true. I didn't see anyone go through the hallway and I didn't hear anything else, pal. But the killer found a way to kill the two guys that's beyond what I can even imagine. So he intends to continue telling this ridiculous lie. 
But why would he do so, given the situation he's in? Leave a thorough investigation of the hallway in front of the defendant lobbies is in order. Ah! You! Why did she just run to kick him in the back of the knee? <laughs> how could you have not... Oh, how could you have not noticed that coming? <laughs> Wasn't that the child I changed money for earlier? Thanks, that's exactly what I needed. Kids can sometimes be so cruel. Looks like she dropped something. Swiss roll. Maybe we should arrest the girl. She might turn out to be a valuable lead. I believe some sort of punishment may need to be dealt the next time we meet. It says courthouse special on it. Courthouse special Swiss rolls. This means so somewhere on the premises. I don't recall seeing a restaurant of any sort in the courthouse. Somehow doubt you'll find junk food like this on a restaurant menu, Francisca. Well then, where do they sell these things, huh? Um, a convenience store, I suppose. Well, I'm sure there's no convenience store in this courthouse, Miles Edgeworth. Look, where in the world does this come from? Vending machine? I believe I've asked all that I need to of this man. Now for Detective Bad and the judge. We have to confirm who is the who is correct, the judge or that scruff face, right? Suppose we should inspect the hallway in front of lobby number two next then. Hmm. Suppose so. Shall we head on over, Francisca? So did you see anything else? Hmm. No, I don't think so. I see. Thanks for your cooperation. Oh, it's nothing. Just doing my duty as a defender of the law. That'll be all for now. I'll ask again if I have any other questions. Anytime, detective. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a few loose ends I have to tie up. Oh, you're the new prosecutor Mr. Von Karma recommended, right? My name is Miles Edgeworth, Your Honor. And I'm Manfred Von Karma's daughter, Francis uh, Franziska Von Karma. I'm set to become the successor to my genius father any day now, Your Honor. I see. Mr. New Prosecutor recommended by Von Karma. Er uh, I bit my tongue. Are you alright, Your Honor? Please feel free to refer to me as just Miss Von Karma, Your Honor. As for him, just Edgeworth is fine. Apparently somebody doesn't feel that I'm worthy of a proper title. Oh-ho! Very well then, I shall call you Miss Von Karma and Mr. Prosecutor Edgeworth. Your Honor, Mr. Edgeworth is fine, sir. Now about your earlier testimony. Yes? What about it, Mr. Edgeworth? I'd like to ask you a few questions about what exactly you saw. Alright, after all, it's my duty to clarify my testimony as Defender of the Law. I greatly appreciate your- oh, I greatly co no, bleh. I greatly appreciate your cooperation, Your Honor. Now the first thing I will need to do is figure out that detective's exact movements. Alright, investigation time then. Your Honor, I'd like to ask you a few questions if you don't mind. Where were you at the time of the murder? Uh, d d do you suspect me of something? No, nothing of the sort, Your Honor. Hmm. <clears throat> Very well, you may continue with your testimony. Your Honor, it's your testimony I'm after. Oh! I had no idea you were chasing after me or my testimony. You gained to sense that I might want to avoid being in a trial run by this judge. Good luck with that. Let's see here. Then how should I put this? When you get to be my age, 
You need to pay more frequent visits to the restroom. Hmm. If you go take a look through the window at the end of this hall, you'll see a small window. That is the window to the men's restroom. In other words, you can see clearly into this hallway from the men's restroom. I was going into the restroom, that detective, Gumshoe is it? Well, he was standing in front of the vending machines buying something from it. Hmm. However, and this I couldn't believe, I was about to exit the restroom, there was not a soul in the hallway anymore. Your Honor, if you could please calm down and explain it to me rationally. Oh, I'm really sorry. Please let me regain my composure. It was really suspicious. That's what my finely honed judge's intuition said. Although, well, until the murders occurred, I just sort of brushed it off. <laughs> oh. Apparently this judge doesn't understand the concept of staying calm. It's probably all I'm going to find out from his honor. Mr. Edgeworth, may I return to my other duties now? Yes, I'm sorry to have had you up. Held you up. Oh my god. Thank you for your cooperation, Your Honor. Oh, ho, ho. anytime, Mr. Edgeworth. Anytime. The judges in this country seem rather friendly. Yes, if not a little wishy-washy. However, I hear that there are they are known to hand down very fair verdicts. Do they now? Old Rustata suspected every suspicious looking looking cranny. Hmm? What is this? It's a pink colored piece of trash made of rubber. Hmm. Hmm, I feel like I've seen something like this before. All I see is a piece of garbage. But you know, the fact that there is a litter running loose inside this courthouse. It's simply unforgivable. Pack? It's not like it was I who littered. Pup, the rubbish belongs in a rubbish bin. Yerk. Ugh. What's the matter? I pricked myself on one of the cactus's needles. I didn't think the needles on this thing would be so sharp. Well, what did you expect? Can you imagine how bad it would be if you were hit on the head by one of these? Anyway, this cactus seems to be unrelated to our case. You really think so? Because I believe that this cactus sitting on this window is completely related. How? Oh? Well then I look forward to your explanation of how exactly it is related. So that window on the- oh my god. That window on the other side belongs to the men's restroom. I can't see it. At your height. I'm not surprised. No! I guess short people have feelings too. <laughs> okay... It might be it for this general vicinity. But the ants are hard at work carrying their food home. It's a marvel that they can pick up eat, uh, such comparatively large objects to their size. Well, if you want to carry the Mighty Von Karma name and not be squashed under it, you'd better work extra hard just like these ants. Same goes for you, Francisca. I saw that arrow pointing down. The dirt on this bench. It smells like some sort of sweet substance. Can't believe there is someone going around dirty in the courthouse. For shame. Calm down, Francisca. Now take a good look. Doesn't this smudge look kind of like a handprint to you? I suppose. It could be. 
Which means, or which means, that perhaps we can lift the prints of the person who sullied this bench. I see. Then we'll know the identity of our mystery slob. You there, the lab technicians. Could you please find out who this handprint belongs to? Yes, sir. Got the results of the fingerprint analysis, sir. And? Do we know how they or who they belong to? Sir, the fingerprints belong to Detective Gumshoe. Oh. Interesting. Good work, officer. Huh. And there you have it. Yes, I suppose so. Now we know the identity of the person who dirtied the bench. I sense that you and I will be using this information in very different ways. Let's talk to him. Detective Bat, I have something I wish to inquire about. Hey, how about doing some actual work, you? Wish to inquire into Detective Gumshoe's movements during the recess. You're getting in the way of the invest. Oh, you're getting in the way of the investigation. I have an order from Mr. Von Karma himself. Plus, I still hold investigative authority. Tch. So I hear you were the one who called for Detective Gumshoe to come down here. Faraday, that guy was just accused. You know. I just knew something was gonna happen. My detective sense. Oh my god. My detective's instinct told me. Why am I incapable of reading today? I am so sorry. A lot of good it did you. You couldn't even protect one lone prosecutor with it. Well, was he about to pull out the toolie? Francisca, I think you need to apologize. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm terribly sorry, Detective Bat. Please continue. Hmm. I used the phone on the first floor and called the precinct. I told them to send somebody over. Hmm. And that detective's the one that showed up. Hmm. Only upon his arrival did you set Detective Gumshoe to stand guard, Detective Bad. Yeah, I waited for him on the first floor. Every got here, came up to use those defendant lobbies together. As we entered this hallway, we ran into you. She told us that Faraday was really mad. And that he dragged Rel off to lobby number two to have a word or something. And that Faraday had said to not let anyone interrupt them. So what choice did I have? All I could do was tell the big lug to stand guard outside. Around what time did all of this take place? Let's see. I think it was about 30 minutes before I heard the gunshot. But given the big lug his assignment, he never left the hallway. Not once. Oh? How can we make... Blah, blah. And how can you make such a claim? <laughs> One of the guards out in this floor's main lobby swore to me he didn't. The detective never left the hallway. Then where did he disappear off to? Hmm, that's simple. He must have gone into lobby number two just as I suspected. You and I, we're in lobby number one next door. The only one without an alibi is Gumshoe. Hmm, it seems that I'm still missing some key pieces of information. Detective Bad, you also heard the gunshot, did you not? Yeah. I heard it when I was in Defendant Lobby Number One. That's why I came running towards Lobby Number Two together with you. Much time elapsed between you hearing the gunshot and your arrival on the scene. Less than a minute. Hmm. Okay, I am mad zoning out for some reason, and I am sorry. And what about your moves upon hearing the gunshot? I grabbed the big luck who was just walking around in the hall. 
and race into lobby number two. And that's when we discovered the bodies in that order. That makes you the discoverer of the crime scene, right? Yeah, I guess it does, little miss. I am about to become a prosecutor very soon. You will treat me with the dignity I deserve or else. <laughs> um, you wave that thing around anymore. And I'll have you arrested for obstruction, little miss. You wouldn't dare. <laughs> Just joking. <laughs> Detective Bad is really something if you can make Francisca behave. Are we about done? Is there anything else I should ask him about? Situation around the gunshot? Let's know a little more about the circumstances under which you heard the gunshot. Like I said, I was in lobby number one with you. I have nothing else to add. Oh, I have nothing else to add. Well, his testimony certainly co oh my God, corroborates what, with what Miss You said. Miles, you already asked him about that, remember? You should ask about something else. Other than the time. I'd like for you to tell me the exact time you heard the gunshot. It was around the end of the recess. The trial was about to start again. I think. He's supposed to make time for himself to transfer the evidence he was holding. But I got the sense he wasn't going to show up for the handoff. I am so mixing up voices here. So I figured I should go get him or he'd be late. Just as I thought that. Bang. I have a gunshot hit my eardrums. So we heard the gunshot right before the trial was about to restart, huh? Are we done here? I don't have any time to waste. Oh, come on. All you're doing is standing in front of this door doing nothing. <laughs> I get the sense that he is someone who investigating this crime scene, or rather, that he's keeping us under surveillance. But to what end? Detective Bad, may I ask that you cooperate with us for just a bit longer? I don't have anything else to say to the two of you. You guys are the ones who said you wanted to investigate in the first place. Fine then, be obstinate. Phil, just do his fee, please. Come on, Miles. You may no longer be willing to help us, however. And ask you for the forensic scientist's cooperation. Do as you like. Boy, he mad grump. Hmm. It would appear that this vending machine sells snacks and various other foods. Seven dollars for a hot dog? Nine dollars for beef jerky? Actually, beef jerky is super bad. Just lovely. Who will they think of next? Don't be a jerk in court like these beef jerks. One packet for nine dollars. Defendant's fresh milk. One half pint for seven dollars. Stay ne neutral as the Swiss do with these for six dollars. Or do until the end with these, okay. They're awfully overpriced. The lineup is simply awful, period. Speaking of snacks, I wonder if that Swiss roll the little girl dropped us from this machine. Hmm, I was wondering about that myself. Yeah? Neutral is the end of what? Well, I assume it means the end of the trial. I suppose this means that one should eat these during a recess? You can't eat during a trial, so I suppose the only time you can eat them is now, huh? I wouldn't mind if you wanted to eat one now. They come in packs of two, after all. <laughs> We're in the middle of an investigation. Besides, I don't have six dollars on me. If you want, we can pull our money and buy a pack together. If I have to split it with you, then I don't want it. Cry, baby. Yo, know, this shit is, like, too expensive, yo.
You found any suspicious fingerprints, officer? No, just the fingerprints of those involved with the case, sir. Guess we know all of the players in this case, then, huh? It would appear that way, but I have the nagging feeling that we're missing something. I suspect that we're missing this hiding right here in the crime scene somewhere. Find something, officer. I think there's a $5 bill back there. Come on, just a little more. Is there no one back in this crime scene who isn't a total waste of leaving tissue? Fortunately, there doesn't seem to be a single person we can deem useful here. Damn. Oh no, he's still saying that. Oh, is that blood? What are these black speckles? Leave us a pile of ants eating away. Oh, that detective, he claims that not a single ant slipped by him. And yet here is a whole haul of them. Black? What are you hitting me for? A replacement for that pathetic detective. Perhaps I should add this distance to the detective's glowing tab of pay cuts. Anyway, I wonder what the ants are eating. From the look and sweet smell of it, pieces of cake and chocolate from a Swiss roll. Miles Edgeworth, the courthouse is to be kept pris pristine at all times. No, it wasn't me that dropped food on the ground. The courthouse must be kept clean. Okay, go indeed. Do I do something with the logic? Oh, wow. I guess I combine Swiss roll crumbs with vending machine. These bits of chocolate and cake, could they not have come from a Swiss roll? A Swiss roll? Why would a courthouse sell a thing like that? It may not seem like the right venue, however, it is being sold right over there. The vending machine? Ah, I see. Stay neutral as the Swiss do until they end with these. Two for six dollars. Talk about expensive. Leaving the fact that it's on the expensive side aside, the fact that the cake crumbs and chocolate bits were found in this hallway suggests that they came from a Swiss roll that was purchased from this machine. Hmm. I think I have a pretty clear picture of what happened here now. Hmph, <laughs> naturally. After all, I'm here, aren't I? Detective Gumshoe must have sat on this bench as he ate a Swiss roll. And as he ate, he dropped it on the floor and sullied the bench. Oh. Oh, and that could have been when Judge didn't see him. Because, like, he was down on the ground. Look, how could he not cleaned up after himself? How utterly despicable. Don't you dare whip me again. It wasn't I who made the mess in the first place. Anyway, it was indeed Detective Gumshoe who bought the Swiss roll. That creates a rather interesting contradiction of facts. A contradiction? Where? <laughs> I think another look at the special courthouse vending machine is in order. So I've covered every suspicious looking nook and cranny. Okay, the Swiss roll dialogue is still the same. Uh, defendant's fresh milk. What exactly is that supposed to mean? But it means that the milk is freshly milked by various defendants on trial right now. No, I think it might mean that this was milked right here from various defendants. Ew. That's Edgeworth. You can't possibly be serious. Of course not. 
and it's looking bad blind your opposition with some OJ. Are they promoting violence? Don't worry, my VIP will make sure that nobody following this advice won't be for long. Compared to the sting of a whip, the sting of orange juice might not be so bad. Wait, no, there is a contradiction. He said he didn't have money. But he cashed this check. But it was only five dollars. About Detective Gumshoe's finances. He said that until this morning. He didn't even... He didn't have even a single penny on his personage. Just how poor is that guy? If his bonus really was only five dollars. He should not have been able to purchase a pack of Swiss rolls. However, facts being as they are, we found cake crumbs on the floor. Meaning Scruffy must have brought a pack somehow. Indeed. The detective should not have been able to purchase a pack, and yet he did. The question is, how? Hmm. Okay, well I figured that out, so uh, now what? More logic, I guess? Hmm. Huh. Like, these are the last two things. Do I combine these in some way? I guess I do. This pink rubbery substance, I saw this in a different form earlier today. I believe this is a piece of a pop balloon. Suppose that's possible. The balloon probably got a little too close to our friend, the windowsill cactus. That would be the logical conclusion, yes. Who had a balloon? What? We had a- there was- someone had a balloon? I believe I now have a very firm grasp on what happened here. I- I don't. What? Did Kay have a balloon when she showed up? That's the only thing I can think of, because no one else would have- a balloon. Oh, wait. So maybe she needed change for a Swiss roll <laughs> from the vending machine because Gumshoe didn't have money. They shared the Swiss roll. Like, she sat down on the bench with them and, like, her balloon popped. Did it hit the cactus? Is that why she kicked Edgeworth then? She blamed him? I, I don't... I don't know. Alright, well, well I do too. Hmm. Alright, Francisca. Would you care to share what conclusions you've come to? Why should I do that? We're still in the middle of a competition, you know. You should be checking to see if your conclusions are wrong first, so you go ahead. It's almost cute that she's going this far to ensure that she wins. Almost. Very well, but first we need to pay his honor a visit to correct his testimony. And we'll do that next time. Thank you all for watching. Have a great day. See you next time for some more Let's Play Easy Attorney Investigations. Miles Edgeworth. Goodbye.